let's talk about Tennessee at Oklahoma. This is one of my favorite matchups of the week, and mainly because of a couple of things. There's there's storylines galore here. Oklahoma hosts Tennessee as their first SEC matchup uh, as a you know an SEC conference member. Tennessee comes in. This is the best Tennessee team that we've seen in years. Oklahoma, I feel like, is in a transition period right now where, you know, the the defense seems to be doing this right now for Oklahoma. It's go it's getting better year by year right now, and they're playing pretty di- pretty decent ball. Uh, but you've got a first year quarterback, right? And and I feel like you're kind of trying to work some things out. Oklahoma has not been healthy at wide receiver. You, you've had several guys that have been out uh, throughout the course of the season so far. Um, and, and let's just be blunt about it. Everywhere you look, you'll see Oklahoma fans talking about it. The offensive line is a question mark for Oklahoma at this point. There's been injuries at the center position. with A couple of different guys at that center position has caused a little bit of issues. Um, we, we saw Oklahoma struggle with Houston a couple of weeks ago. I was more impressed with their victory this past week over Tulane, as we talked about in our Top 25 video. But this 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 game is very intriguing. Tennessee opens as a seven-point favorite uh, in a 59-and-a-half point over-under. So Vegas is looking for this game to be a high-scoring one and a close game. And, look, I, I just have to be honest with you. I, I have a ton of questions about how this – Oklahoma offensive line is going to settle down this Tennessee defensive line and Tennessee front seven. Um, this this group at Tennessee is very disruptive. Um, now, have they played an offense as good as Oklahoma this year? You would, you could argue no. NC State is not a good offense. Uh, we we know that now. We didn't know that to start the year. We, we were a little higher on NC State than we should have been. Um, this is going to be the the biggest test for Tennessee so far, no doubt about it. And it being on the road with Tennessee having a first year starting quarterback in Nico I- Iamaleva. I'm Le- oh my gosh, I- I'm never going to be able to say it if I can't say it by now. Um, Nico has done a really good job, but going on the road in the SEC is a whole different thing, man. It, it is a yeah. whole different thing, and you know, I'm not saying he can't do it. I'm not saying he won't go out here and ball his ass off, dude. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but I, I think that Tennessee can come out here, rely on the run game, uh, because Tennessee, I mean, my God, Mason, they've, they've ran the ball at 6.96 yards per rush this year. And their defense is allowing opponents to run the ball at 1.76 yards per rush this season. <laughs> That's quite a split there. Uh, and it, it tells you a lot about what the identity of this Tennessee team is. I think a lot of people, and there'll be a lot of Oklahoma fans that have watched Tennessee from afar over the past few years, and they're thinking, all right, we got to get ready for this air raid. This is not an air raid offense. Tennessee is a run-the-football-first offense, and as Coach Heupel said in his press conferences this week, defense is part of our culture here at Tennessee. And and that hasn't been the truth. Let's be honest, guys. That hasn't been the truth over the last few years. But the DNA of this team, in my opinion, is that defense in that front seven. Can Oklahoma buy themselves enough time to test out that secondary? That is the biggest question mark for me in this football game. Um, I I think Tennessee is going to do what they're going to do. They're going to provide pressure on the quarterback. Can they keep him in the pocket? Jackson Arnold rushed for – he's the leading rusher for this team this year. And this past Saturday – he took off on Tulane several times whenever the pocket collapsed. Um, you know, can Tennessee keep him in the pocket? I think that's kind of the question. I think that's what you want if you're Tennessee is to try to keep him in that pocket and make him throw to win this football game. You trust your rush defense. The, the running back isn't exactly a strength, I don't think, of this offense. Um, and can Oklahoma get these wide receivers healthy and back for this football game? That's another, that's another big yeah. question for them. Uh, what what you know, do you think on this one? An, an interesting point, kind of further in what you were talking about with Oklahoma, whether or not they're going to be able to pass protect to to give Jackson Arnold Arnold time to take advantage of the secondary, which 
might be really good. We don't know because they really haven't been challenged uh, for Tennessee uh, all season long. When we did our preview, we said that that was the weakest unit of the defense, which is not a knock. It's just, I mean, let's be honest, they got one of the best defensive lines in the country. But what's really interesting, going back to your point about whether or not this offensive line is going to be able to hold up, kind of a surprising stat here, but uh, Tennessee's only averaging 1.3 sacks per game. Now, that doesn't factor in quarterback hurries or uh, pass rush win rates or anything like that. So I understand you can wreak havoc and not get to the quarterback and be very effective as a defense. And I also understand that you can, as a defense, you can be really efficient and force a lot of three and outs and not get as many opportunities to sack the quarterback because they're not they're not getting as many plays. So that can be a very misleading stat, but it is a little bit interesting uh, with this defensive front, as good as they are at pass rush. I did think that that number would be a little bit higher, a little bit below the, the league average of 1.8. They're 99th in the country in sacks. Um, but when you're facing an Oklahoma offensive line, as bad as they are right now, traditionally they're not bad, but this year they're they're a pretty bad O line. It, it, it's it's an opportunity to get right and get your get your sack number up a little bit. Um, Oklahoma is ranked ranking 113th in the country, giving up three sacks per game. So um, this is your opportunity, Tennessee, if you want to pad some stats on defense to to go out there and and get the quarterback. And look, th- there's no surprise here. Statistically, when you look at the matchups, um, Tennessee. Tennessee's got the edge in every matchup, just about. When you when you compare Tennessee's defense to Oklahoma's offense, um, Tennessee's first in the country, giving up 160 yards of total offense um, each game. I mean, that's that's unreal. They're obviously first in yards per play at 3.1 yards per play. Uh, rushing yards are only giving up 55 uh, rushing yards per game. That's fourth in the country. Uh, that's a 1.8 average uh, running the football. Um I mean, they're they're just really good on defense. I, I think that, and, and you know, Mark, your dad said something about about this when we were watching the game uh, yesterday. We were watching some football games, and your dad said, "You know, I just I just don't know about this Tennessee defense. You know, I haven't seen enough yet." And, and, and I kind of I get where he's coming from because when when you think of Tennessee under Josh Heupel, you think about the offense, and you know that they're going to put a good offense on the field. But really, the the defense is. Is kind of the um, it's kind of the story here, I think, for Tennessee, and, and and it's so important what they did on the defensive line specifically is going to be so important for them uh, in this season and, and moving forward for this program with the way that they play offense, the way that they run hurry up, and they did it this past week against a team that they probably didn't have to run hurry up. Right, but they wanted to to run their system. I mean, uh, that that's what they did. Even when they brought the second and third string quarterback in, they ran hurry up because that's what they run. But when you run that type of system, if you don't, if you, if you're not connecting and you're not uh, extending drives and and winning on third down and things like that, you can really put your defense in a tough situation. If you have a lot of three and outs, if you if you've got the ball for two minutes, you know, and, and score a touchdown, even that that can put a lot of uh, a, a lot of strain and stress on that defense, sp- specifically that defensive line. Well, now Tennessee's got three sets of defensive linemen that they can rotate in and out and keep them fresh. Uh, I've been saying that all year long, uh, and, and I'm going to keep saying it till I'm blue in the face. That's going to be the reason they win some of these bigger matchups that they that they weren't able to do, that they would fall apart in the second half because that, that defensive line was getting gassed. Well, they finally have the horses up front to, to – Um, play complimentary football and I think it's going to pay dividends in this game and in games in the future for Oklahoma some keys to victory for Oklahoma right they're a little bit tough to find this week against a tough uh, Tennessee defense but like you said you've you've got to find ways Jackson Arnold's got to extend plays with his legs escape the pocket um, that, that you've got to kind of force Tennessee to lose contain on the edges um, and, and allow Jackson Arnold. We saw some design runs this past week. That was a big part of his game. Had over 100 yards on the ground himself. If he can squirt out of the pocket and extend plays with his legs, I could see that um, kind of putting the Tennessee defense in a little bit of a bind where they have to spy the quarterback. They're probably going to go out there with that game plan anyways with how effective Jackson Arnold's been with his legs. But what does that do to the secondary? What does that do to the pass rush, right? How, how does that affect things? Because if you over-pursue in your pass rush, well, he's he's going to come, come right up the middle. I mean, that 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 
tends to lead to an open uh, an opening in the middle of the defense if your linebacker's not blitzing. So if that's happening, um, you know, m- maybe maybe Jackson Arnold is a- able to um, take advantage of that. And then what's the counter? What's the play behind that for Tennessee? How do they counter that? Do they do they play a little bit more containment? Uh, and if that's the case, then Jackson Arnold could win it with his arm and go over the top. Um, you know, just trying to trying to find some some silver linings here for Oklahoma. I do think this is a really tough matchup for them. But um, if if Oklahoma is going to stay in this, if they're going to win the game, I think that's going to be how it happens. And uh, not to mention a couple of turnovers on defense couldn't hurt. Yeah, look, keys to victory for Oklahoma. I think are super simple. You have to you have to get Tennessee in a situation where you know what's coming. And what I mean by that is get them in third and predictable. Tennessee, if they have success on first and second down, they're going to go turbo speed, and the playbook opens up to every single play, they whatever they want. Oklahoma is going to have to stop Dylan Sampson in this rushing attack on first and second down. That's got to be the priority number one. You you got to just worry about the rest of it later. And that's hard, you know, it's hard to focus on one thing with this Tennessee offense. They've got all these playmakers. Um, but we talked about the Oklahoma defense getting better, Mason. They're their opponents are averaging 30.23% on third down this year. That's a good number. The defense is doing very well on third down, and that's going to have to continue if they want to win this football game for sure. Now, on offense, this offense is averaging 4.86 yards per play on offense for Oklahoma. That's not going to get it done. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to run the football effectively. Um, Taylor Tatum is a freshman that's been – He's a running back that's kind of emerging, I guess you could say, for Oklahoma. 15 carries, 102 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Somebody's got to emerge out of this running back room, and and you're going to have to run the clock because Tennessee has a good enough offense where nobody's going to shut them down. It's not going to happen. Your offense is going to have to play defense. You're going to have to keep the offense out there, sustain drives, just like Kentucky did this past week. The, the Kentucky sustained drives against Georgia this past week ran that clock, and, you know, get to the end of the game and we'll worry about it then. And what do you know, Georgia barely wins. That's what Oklahoma's got to do here. They've got to run that clock, possess the football, keep it out of the hands of Nico and all those playmakers over there for Tennessee's offense, who, by the way, Mason, uh, want just a little cherry on top for Tennessee's defense, they're allowing 15.79% on third down. 15, not 50, 15 point seven nine percent and as an offense well, they're averaging 56.82 percent on third a lot of uh, a, for, a, for a lot of those third down a lot a lot of that stat from what i've seen is being one on first and second down they're forcing a lot of third and longs and that's uh, to me that's why uh they've been so effective on third down not to not to steal your point there but uh i just thought i'd add that in well the playbook is so much shorter than third and long there's only a few things you can do that you feel good about um yeah, so I, I certainly I certainly like the prospect of Tennessee winning and covering this football game. We're going to revisit this on the Tuesday preview and prediction show. Um, you know, we went pretty deep on it today here on our initial thoughts. We've been watching lots of Tennessee and, and Oklahoma football, so um, kind of all this stuff was just off the top of our head today. But we'd love for you to join us if you're a Tennessee or Oklahoma fan. Come join us on the Tuesday night live show. Uh, we put a link in our description for you to be able to come on the show if you'd like. Come talk to us. Tell us what you're – you know, kind of points of, of impact, keys to victory are for, for this football game and all the great football games this week. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday and hope that you'll uh, hit like and subscribe to the channel so that we'll see you around our awesome college football community.